What is up, peeps? It's following TCG. I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And today we're going to be playing, of course, PTCGO. And we have Turtonator. This deck is just built around Turtonator GX. Um, I find a little fun little combo at the start of the game. You get Turtonator GX out, you go for an energy attachment to Kiyawe, and that gives you a couple turns of just straight 160 damage of Bright Flame. And then you go for Nitro Tank to recharge. It's a very quick deck. And it's designed to take quick prizes. Sorry, I had an itchy, uh, itchy moustache. That's a bit of a weird thing to do to just go. <laughs> uh, we have Salazzle GX here just as like an extra tech. Also great in the late game if we take early prizes quickly. Salazzle GX gets really good. And we've incorporated the likes of Zev Striker to help discard energies for our um, Nitro Tank GX attack. And we have the likes of Heat Factory and everything like that. So we've incorporated some Lost Prism cards here. Bro, 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 bro. Wait, hold up. Did you just say Lost Prism? Look, I know you've had a long day. But it's lost thunder, my dude. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. Um, Turtonator is something that I think, still quite itchy. Um, I think now, in the current format we're in, I don't think it is something that, you know, is a real shout. But I, I remember pre-rotation, Turtonator was a card. I was like, yeah, this is good. It can hit 190 every single turn if you get it going. And it has some follow-up as well once you burn out of energy. So, I mean, I was like, yeah, turn it a good shot. And I mean, even now, um, you get a choice ban, you're hitting 190, and that's like a, a very important number to hit. Um, the reason why I was very excited about it pre-rotation was because of Volcanian EX. You know, you can go for 190, but 190 is not always enough. So being able to go up to, to let me turn my... Uh my speaker off. I feel I've got my speaker on. Power. Um, power off. <laughs> I should really should make a shirt. Just power off. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, still a bit ill, by the way. I've got energy, but my voice is a bit grainy, so I apologize about that. But yeah, Volcanium would have been able to allow you to hit uh, 220, which would have been super uh, relevant when you're up against the likes of Zorark and just stage two <clears throat> um, GXs, right? Or stage one GXs. But obviously, we don't have Volcanium, and there's no real damage modification if I'm aware of four fire type pokemon so certainly it has kind of fallen down here luckily we're playing against a metal deck so we do get to hit some weakness which is nice um and we are just going to go for the, the the good old turn on kiawe and just hope they don't have the ko they have to really get a lot going for a ko they have to charge up a metagross um if it's a metagross gx and then they need a delmise and a choice band and that's the only way they can get one hit ko on us next turn so i think we're just going to go out here with a kiawe Stick to our original strategy. I think that's the best way to... Wait, is, is it the best way? Probably not. It's probably better to set up and then go for it. But <coughs> this deck's designed to just Kiawe attack, attack, attack. And put incredible pressure on the opponent. Um, and then just go from there. So we are just saying to them, get going or you going. <laughs> oh my god, that was super cringy. <laughs> um, yeah, really, really awesome. Also, um, oh my god. Uh, Vetus, buddy, if you're watching this, if I'm pronouncing your name right, thank God. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry. Oh, you left the, you, you touched me, man. Touched me right here. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, you left a message on Twitter. Um, ADV Jim, who is another guy, uh, that watches my YouTube channel, a great fella as well. Um, who I follow on Twitter and watch his YouTube videos. Um, he made just, a, like, he's doing like a Thanksgiving giveaway. And he's like, you know, uh, name free Poke Twitter accounts that you are thankful for and tell him why. And he named me as well. Um, and it's super awesome. He was saying something like, um, I'm a great soul. My videos are awesome. Uh, and I'm always trying something new. And I, was, oh, I just oh, touched me right there, buddy. I really appreciate it, man. Um, speaking of Thanksgiving, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving here. Um, I believe it is Thanksgiving today. I could be extremely wrong, but I know Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday. And it's usually the day before Black Friday, if I'm correct. I could be so wrong. Um, but if, if any of you are in America and it is Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, I hope it all goes well and you have a good time. Oh, my God. They actually charged up a Metagross GX this turn. Do they have a Delmise and a Choice Band? Because I did not see that happening. Okay, <clears throat> that's kind of good news because uh, we are one hit KO with a GX. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying your Thanksgiving. If it is, if not, I sound like an idiot, but nonetheless, I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, and I'm thankful to every single one of you watching, liking, commenting. Um, oh, it's so, it's so awesome. Like recently, the amount uh, of res response um, and interaction from you guys have received is is far better. Um, than ever before on my channel and it's so awesome and it feels so great it feels like i've got a sense of community here um so if you're someone who regularly watches or regularly comments 
Love you, man. Completely. Trust me. I, I really, really do appreciate your support. Um, speaking of love, Turtonator is giving us the love here by taking out this Metagross GX here. Now we are on four prizes and we're ready to attack next turn. Uh, they don't have a follow-up attack uh, unless they get Metagross GX, which they don't. So we know they ain't going to be able to hit us next turn. Uh, hitting for weakness is kind of a big deal because um, we are getting prizes galore. And then all we need to do is just get... Uh, Salazzle GX. If we take these two prizes here, we get Salazzle GX and we're hitting 200 damage raw. And then it's just like set game match, right? We've got the Ditto Prism Star down. Um, the reason I put Ditto Prism Star is because we're playing Blitzful. And again, we're only playing one Salazzle. Um, yes, that's a bit iffy, but um, I don't really have much space. I guess I could incorporate two. But I've done the Ditto just for an extra evolution route in case our oh, Salandit's prize or anything down that line. I mean, let's play the Nest Ball and see what's going on. We might not even have Salazzle. Yeah, we do. And we have Salandit, so... That's kind of a win-win. Um, I'll leave that spend that space free for a Lele in the future. Acro bike. Let's see what we pull off this. We pull another acro bike, which I'm actually kind of okay grabbing. I don't mind that skateboard going down. We've got one on the Lele. That's fine. Uh, let's go for another one here. Uh, field blower or choice band? Hmm. Uh, take choice band. We haven't played our supporter yet, but obviously we need to play Guzma. Um, evidently. Uh, so let's go play our Guzma here <clears throat> and grab that Sizzle GX and then just go for another Bright Flame. It's just bang, bang. <laughs> That's what I love about this Terminator deck. It's like, it's quite consistent as well. You know, there's a lot of times you are, like, I think most games you're getting your turn one Kiawe, unless you're unlucky. I think it's like we play, like, is it two Topi Lele GX and, like, three Kiawe? You're very likely you're going to get a Kiawe. Um, going, yeah, they just, they just, they just bucket it. They're like, nah, nah, game over for me, game over. <laughs> Um, well, that's a smart move to make. But that obviously was against a deck that we hit for weakness. So we're guaranteeing the one shot. We need to see how this deck fares against bad matchups. So what are the bad matchups for this deck? I'm thinking about it. Uh, mostly any sort of water decks, a Quagsire box will just destroy it. Um, what other decks are there? I think is, is, as long as the deck's set up and you're not one-shotting them, um, I think it's a struggle. Turtonator tends to struggle. You know, Turtonator is not meant to be two-shotting um, when it's discarding energy like that. Uh, there's many ways you could play Turtonator, but let's be real. Um, <clears throat> what everyone's probably thinking is, uh, why do you need Turtonate? We've got Blacephalon. <laughs> and uh, you are you are completely right. You are very much right. Um, I've just like I just made this deck a while ago, and I was like, let's update it and let's just play it um, and showcase it here. So, I thought why not? And that's exactly what we're doing. So we've got some Acrobats to play. So it's still not game over for the turn one. Um, Kiawe. <clears throat> Going first is extremely crucial in this deck. Obviously, you want to get the Kiawe when you can't attack. Um, so you're pretty much ready to go on your first attack. Or the first turn where you can attack. So, um, yeah. But yeah, Blacephalon is obviously the, the, the best matchup. It's more consistent. It hits more damage. It's just better, right? Um, but at the same time, it's just fun. Terminator is fun. Like, I think the amount of... Obviously, this is pre-rotation. Uh, pre <coughs> the amount of tournaments I won with this thing. Online tournaments. Must emphasize that. I've won. Yeah, but this thing is just insane. Um, it's really fun. All right. So let's have we got everything we need in the deck. We're going to get a Terminator out ASAP. I'm going to go for some Acro Bikes. And fingers crossed we can hit some stuff. Um, Energy is pretty good. we got a Heat Factory. So that's like good. We can, we can just continue to draw here if we don't get what we want. I kind of want to take an Energy rather than a Guzma. Because I want to attach and then Heat Factory. Um, and see what we get. So let's, let's do that. That's Heat Factory. Uh, do we pull Kiawe? We do. So we've got a turn on Kiawe, which is great. I'm going to hold the escape board um, so we can retreat next turn without having to worry about Field Blower. So if they don't get that Lele out of the active, um, we get another two prizes just like that. So that's a win-win scenario there. Um, let's just see how it turns out for them. Their hand's quite fat. And it looks like we're playing a Malamar... It's either Malamar spread or just a Malamar box. Because I've seen Giratina be played more in spread decks now. Um, with the likes of like Tapu Coco and uh, Shining Arceus. Oh, so we're actually playing Kofrigus. I'm very bad at pronouncing that. Which is cool. Um, <coughs> not necessarily a fan of this deck. I don't know. I think it's got great potential. But it just doesn't run the way you'd like it to most of the time. Um, thinking about it, because if you're playing the likes of Malamar and then you've got another Coffer Grigus on the bench, you're just severely reducing the damage output because you're not going to discard those, are you? You want to keep them on the bench um, to make sure you can just keep going. So, I don't know. Shine of Punishment, that's definitely going to hurt us. So, uh, we definitely need to 
be high speed here. Hopefully we 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 draw a Guzma, and I might actually risk it, risk it for a biscuit. Um, oh yeah, we got a Guzma. All right, the reason why we have a Guzma here is oh no, I have to think. I have to discard these two supporters, which feels bad. Feels real bad. But we're gonna look. We have to be fast. Oh wait, no 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 no. I don't need a Guzma. I'm so ahead of myself. They have they didn't retreat. That's like a big mistake. Why would they not do that? Can't they see what's like facing them? Did they forget? Look, they got the energy there. Are they like baiting something? I don't, I don't, I don't know why you would. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna capitalize and just be like, donk. There you go. Uh, considering we're gonna start taking prices now, I'm gonna get a Ditto Prism Star out. Um, and I mean, I could get Ditto. I could get Turtonator. I don't know. I think we'll get the Ditto because this Turtonator's got um, two attacks in it. I think. So I think we should be thinking about, yeah, getting stuff out here. Let's get another nest ball out and play a Salandit, just in case the Ditto goes down. Now we could be super greedy here and go for a sprint. And I kind of feel like that, but I don't know. I'm scared they're going to try and trap me somehow. So I'm going to stick with the Guzmas in hand um, and just play safe here. Right, so just 190 Kapow. Let's see what we pull off the prize cards. Ultra Ball and Acro Bike. So <clears throat> this deck has a lot of discarding. Um, primarily because of Nitro Tank. If you if you whiff um, on your Kiawe, if in any way you whiff on a Kiawe, it's great to just get a ton of energy in the discard power and then just go for a, uh, a Nitro Tank. Um, especially if you're going first on the second turn. It's great because you can just charge yourself up pretty much like a Kiawe, right? without needing to get it. So it's just another alternative, which is why I like using Acro Bike and, and Heat Factory and stuff, just to discard energy. We play 12 energy, so we we are fine there. <clears throat> right, they're, uh, they're having a bad day. <laughs> Not getting everything they want. Um, I kind of want to Guzma the... Cough no, no, no. I kind of want to Guzma the Malamar, actually. Or the Inkay. Well, no, I think the Cophagigus is, is important because they've got an energy on that now. Um, I think we... Yeah, I, I, I want an acro bike, so I want an energy. Um, oh, we whiffed on the energy, that's fine. We can ultra ball for something, but like, what? If we're ultra pulling for anything now, it's a GX, and I don't want to get any GXs out yet. So, we're going to have to pretty much stand down on this turn when it comes to attaching energy, which is a bit of a shame, because I want to get the energy attachment on Salan, uh, Salazzle, considering it's two energy, it's a bit awkward. Um, and we can't use like counter gain or anything, because it's fire, fire. So, we can't really utilize that very well. Um... Yeah, we'll just we'll just Guzma up the Coffee Grigus and just uh, knock it out. <coughs> Which means our Salander is now hitting 150 um, raw. So maybe not. Maybe I should my Salazzle, my Salazzle, sorry, not Salander. Maybe I should play um, two Salazzle because it seems like Turtonate is just going to get early sweeps and then from there Salazzle will just take the game. Um, so you can see this deck is really aggressive. It's extremely aggressive. It's just bang. Knockouts, knockouts, and then late game knockouts with Salazzle. That's kind of how I feel. What do you feel about Salazzle in a um, Blacephalon deck? I mean, it. Thinking about it, it might be okay, like as a one-off tech if you're throwing, if you're playing Ditto Prism Star, because you're playing a bunch of Naganadals, right? So you can throw in a Ditto Prism Star and then just throw in a Salazzle as like a, a tech if you're already playing Ditto Prism Star, should I say? Um, but I think you know, if you're going to have two energy on a Pokemon, you want it on a Blacephon or not a Salazzle, right? <laughs> but I don't know. The fact that Salazzle can do incredible damage late game is just... Yeah, I don't think it should be overlooked, in my opinion. Okay, so it looks like we're going to go for a Nitro Tank GX this turn. So I actually want to evolve the Salazzle and charge it up that way. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we could Ultra Ball for something, but again, I don't want to put too many GXs out there. We could Cynthia. I think Cynthia's okay, although I think we should hold our hand because I want to Nitro Tank this turn. I assume they don't have a switch or anything because they only have three cards in their hands. Uh, Nitro Tank this turn. They probably won't follow up, and then we can Guzma. <clears throat> I want to, yeah, I want to hold this hand because I want to be able to Guzma. So we haven't even used the Sprint yet, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But what we'll do is we'll charge up the Salazzle here, and we'll throw the rest uh, onto this Turtonator, which will be four. Yeah, four on the Turtonator. I mean, do we play Rescue Stretch? I think we play Rescue Stretch. I might put one on the Salander. If the Salazzle gets KO'd, we can go down there. I don't know. Yeah, well, let's let's just. 
<coughs> think, looking at their board state, they probably don't have this knocked out next turn. So that makes me kind of comfortable. I mean, right now we're at, we're just like we, we're one hit KOing anything on their side anyway with the Salazzle. So I don't really need to go for Turtonator from now on. But we're just gonna we're just gonna use Turtonator until it either goes down or we're just out of energy on it. So yeah, so that's why this is why I like Turtonator. It can hold its own for the the early game really well. It's just your Kiawe whack whack. Um, Nitro tank, whack whack. <laughs> it's, just, it's really good at holding itself up in the early games, in my, in my opinion. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think definitely, I think, yeah, we think we should play two Salazzle because two Salazzle just makes it more consistent. We seem to be relying on Salazzle. So, yeah, Turtonator Salazzle, a fun deck, completely, um, obviously, completely outclassed by Blacephalon, but fun. And again, what's the whole point? To have fun. Am I right? Am I right? Okay, so they've got themselves a Cofagrigus, but as expected, they haven't got any sort of a switch or or anything down that line yet. So, I mean, they got themselves a Malamar, so they can charge up a Giratina, which is okay. Um, they haven't actually been able to attack. And this is this is my problem with Cofagrigus. It's like, not only are you limiting your damage with the likes of Malamar, and uh, obviously you don't want only one Cofagrigus in play. You want another um, <coughs> Yam Mask on your bench, ideally. Or Lele, let's say, for example, as he's pulling here, which I'm assuming he's going to use to get Guzma. Um, yeah, he probably would Guzma up the Salazzle, which is kind of funny. I was saying, nah, that won't happen, and then it's probably going to happen, um, which is kind of funny. But then that point, we can just Guzma up Lele, and then we can find another route to game, right? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going off track there. But yeah, so that's one reason. Uh, the, the bench spaces, sometimes you're not going to fill up the bench with all the Giratinas or anything like that, so you're going to limit your own damage output. Yes, the spread damage is good. Oh, they're just passing. Wow, they're not even going to drop the Lele. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I think we just Guzma. I think we just Guzma. Um, we just Guzma. <laughs> and do we go in with the Salazzle now? I think we do because Salazzle has more HP. Um, and if they take out the Turtonator, then that's fine. Our Salazzle will, will survive. Yeah, we're going to use the Salazzle now considering we are one-shotting stuff. <coughs> Diabolical Claws is just a broken attack in my opinion. Do we need to... We don't need to sprint. I mean, I guess we could... Because what are these Ultra Balls doing? They're, not, they're only getting us Turtonators and... Uh... Well, they are getting us a Lele. I mean, we play... I don't think we play for Guzma, so I don't think there's any point. Do we sprint? I mean, we're not, we don't need to, so we won't. But that will we'll be safe. All right, 115. Next turn, 200 damage. Wah, sweet. Absolutely sweet. Um, I'll throw this energy onto Salandit because um, I, I'm pretty sure I play Rescue Stretch. With a lot of discard, I'm, I'm pretty confident I play Rescue Stretcher. If I don't, I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident I play Rescue Stretcher. So I'll, I'll attach an energy to Salandit. So if the Salazzle goes down, we can just Rescue Stretch and then get an energy. And then we've got another Salazzle ready to go. So yeah, let's do that. Right, so what are they saying on their end? Um, right, that Lele is pretty much game. And this is why I held the Ultra Ball, is because if they bench that Lele, it's just Ultra Ball Guzma. Although I just clocked, I have three in the discard pile, and I think I only play three. I think I just said that, so I'm stupid. Sometimes I just, uh, I think so far ahead that it's, that it sound, that sounds like I'm gloating, right? But I'm not. Like, sometimes I shouldn't think, like, try my best to think far ahead. I should just <laughs> kind of be a bit in the moment, take a step back, and then be like, no, there's Guzma's in your discard pile. You can't play Guzma. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they've got all the rescue stretches in the world going here. That's two there. Do they need to play that much? I mean, it depends on what they're using, right? If you're, using, if you're playing, like, 3-3 three, three, Coffer Grigus, which sounds weird, I, I would go for, like, a 4-4 four, four or a 4-3. Four, just to guarantee get your young masks out, but maybe they're playing a bit of a weird line so they can play rescue stretch to accommodate, but I don't know. They they still I don't think they've announced an attack yet, this game. <laughs> I don't think they have. Um <clears throat> I don't really know what's going on. I really don't know what's going on on their end. We've been able to finesse the uh spell tags so far, which is nice. Alright, just uh, another another day in KO land. Um Oh, would it be better to bench the Turtonator and go from <coughs> no we'll we'll go this route we'll, we'll do a Cynthia here um and see what what we get okay that's good field blower 
Uh, let's get rid of the spell tag and the shrine. And I'm just going to nest ball here just to see what's going on with my deck. So I can just, yeah. So we have two rescue stretch actually. So maybe that's, I think that might be a bit overkill, but I'm assuming that's because I play only one Salazzle. All right. So uh, I'm comfortable just going here for the Diabolical Claws. <clears throat> 200 damage. Next one's 250, which is sweet. And uh, wow, we play, what's that? I was about to say, was that a third Tarpu Lele? I only have two Tarpu Lele in the game. I was about to say, hang on, where did that come from? Um, <clears throat> we have definitely draw next turn. I would rather Lele for a Cynthia than Lily. If my Salazzle goes down, we can hopefully Cynthia and then... Oh, well, nope, they're, they're going for the Terminator, I assume. Yeah, that's... I assume they're just going like, what What other choice do I have? That's That's my guess, right? Because ideally, you want to take that Salazzle down. That's like the one you're worrying about. I mean, 250. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've had some pretty good matchups here in, in this video. Um, I wouldn't use this video to determine the deck as a whole. Like, I'm sure you will come up against something where you will struggle. But I think that's some pretty good games there. I think shown off exactly the strategy of this deck. Um, and that the strategy is not too hard to pull off. Um, so, uh, yeah, 250 damage. That takes the last prize there. Let me show you the complete list. I know I did brief over it a little bit at the start, but I'll, I'll show you the full list here. This is a, a very refined deck. I made this deck. I, I mentioned it around pre-release, and I've updated it. So this deck did have a lot of testing um, f from myself, obviously. Test. No, Turtonator. Thank you. Um, from myself, I played a ton of, like, uh, games in tournaments with this deck before rotation. I, I really ship this deck, so I, I know how to play it quite well, and I've really refined the deck uh, to do what it wants. So here is the full list. Um, uh, the inclusion of added are Zeb Striker and the Ditto Prism Star, as well as the Heat Factory to help with draw. Do we need this much draw? I am not sure. You know, we have four Acro Bikes, we have Heat Factory, we have Zeb Striker, we have uh, four Cynthia, four Lily, a ton of draw. And then we have like four Ultra Ball to discard, we have four Nest Ball. This deck is just consistency. And I think what I might do is drop a Rescue Stretcher as, as a Salazzle. I'd like to have another, have another Saland it, but that's kind of uh, iffy. I think, yeah, I think we'll just go to, yeah, I think we'll do that. I think that's, I don't know, it seems weird playing one basic and then two of the evolution i know we have ditto but i think i think yeah i kind of think we should add another salazzle i'll figure it out um but we're just gonna leave it as that for now so uh do leave a like if you did enjoy uh, of course subscribe if you want to see these videos every day during the week and of course my live streams either midweek or on the weekend or both i'll probably be streaming this weekend as well um, I did actually stream yesterday if you do want to check it out, play some Lost March. Um, follow me on Twitter at FDW underscore TCG. And if there's any decks you'd like me to try out, any concepts or ideas you have, that's where the comment section is down below. Do leave a comment and let me know. But other than that, I'll leave you to it. Peace.